We can't. We couldn't score. Again, we have an unbelievable chance. They come down, their first shot goes in the net. Our group goes like this. They pushed, but our group never quit. Eh, I don't know. Did they, uh, did they never give up in that game? It kind of felt like once it was down 0-1, uh, some people started to give up. But we're going to get into everything. Let's go. I don't know. That was a rough night if you're a Minnesota Wild fan, a great night if you're a Dallas Stars fan. Jake Ottinger is amazing. The Wild just beat themselves. Honestly, I I know the Stars were the better team. I got to admit that. But the Wild really beat themselves in this series. And we're going to get into everything. Guess what is your first? You were at the game, right? What's your first uh, 10 second, 20 second thoughts on the game? Great first 10 minutes, that's for sure. I think uh, the 19,000-plus crowd was uh, amped for a shellacking uh, in Game 6. That didn't happen. The Wild team played hard for 10, then didn't play again until about five minutes left in the third. And give Dallas credit. And, hey, there's an old saying, you get what you, you know, you get what you deserve and you got what's coming to you, and that's where we stand today on this day after. Yeah. Do you agree, Alex? They earned that one? <laughs> Absolutely. I guess guess said it well. They were wild looked good at the start of the game and after that that hints goal just kinda went downhill after that. But you know, it's hard as a fan, uh, a wild fan, it's hard to not be sour after that series. But you yes. know what? It is what it is and it's time to start looking towards the off season. Yeah, and we do need to look forward. We we obviously still have to talk about this game, and we're going to be negative against the Wild on this podcast for a little bit, but I don't want this whole podcast to just be us ripping on this entire game. That's not what it's going to be about. So if you're tired of hearing everybody talking about the po- or talking about the Wild just not doing well in the series, go ahead and just like skip forward a few minutes. Actually, because Brock Faber played well, we're going to set a timer for seven minutes. All right? We got seven minutes to talk about the Minnesota Wilds uh, series and how rough it was and what they could do better. And let's start there before we completely forget about the series and start looking to the future and how they're going to get better. But Alex, let me start with you. I mean, obviously, we just mentioned the Wild kicked it off. They started out really strong. Were you feeling like this was in the bag in the first few minutes of the game, even though we hadn't scored yet? I mean, I I don't know. You know, I feel as, like a, we're win. as a Minnesota sports fan, I don't think I can ever feel like a game's in the bag <laughs> until the clock hits zeros. Um <laughs> But, you know, after watching the first couple minutes of play, they were establishing the zone and just it, they felt like they had a game plan and it was working. And then uh, that, that Hartman play where we almost buried one, everyone thought it was it. And then they go down, Hintz, Hintz goes over Gustafson's shoulder. And after that, it just felt like all the momentum had been taken away from them and it just went downhill after that. Do you agree, Gis? Was that the momentum swinging uh, moment or was that just the start of leading to the momentum being swung in Dallas's favor? Or was it already fully? Well, from the yeah, side, even though we came it's out pretty strong, awfully, right? pretty, pretty tough to say that um, the game was decided in the first 10 minutes. Uh, to me, the overriding factor is <clears throat> this game six was kind of a microcosm of the series. If you remember, Minnesota came out of the gate, shot out of a cannon, wins a game in Dallas. Things are looking good. I mean, they've got one game away from having to win three times to win the series and couldn't deliver what was in the middle of it. We've talked about, uh, you know, the officiating. We've talked about injuries. Uh, We've we've talked about a lot of things. But if you were going to talk about negatives for this game and this series, you would have to just say, you know, the failure – the failure to really execute and the failure to really adapt. And by the, by the way, sometime, uh, the, uh, even in Minnesota, we're going to have to do this to the Dallas stars and especially their goalie, Jake Ottinger. This is a team that a lot of people say now they'll be done next round. I don't know. They're built pretty good. And let's not forget that. So credit to Dallas and yeah, it's just, you get what's coming to you sometimes. And unfortunately that's what Minnesota got. Yep. And for me personally, it wasn't even necessarily the hint goal when I just felt like, you know what, this game is over. I, I went into the game being confident, first of all. A lot of people were not. Uh, the ticket prices were going down even for that game, and I felt like we were going to win on at our home ice. But the second that I knew that this game was headed the wrong direction, was probably over, was when our entire team tried to change at the same time in the neutral zone, and Sam Steele was like, oh, do I get out of the way of this puck? And he tried to jump in the bench, blocking the guys from getting out on the bench and giving Dallas... I mean, Dallas could have had a 5-on-0 if they would have played it right, but 
that that felt like just an absolute miscommunication. It felt like squirt level hockey. I mean, jump over the boards or something. I was so frustrated. I was yelling at the TV and I'm like, Sam Steele. Oh, <laughs> I mean, there was a did, lot did, more they, than just they, his fault. But did they, they score on that goal? Uh, they had a scoring chance. I don't, they didn't actually score on that, but they, okay, they had a so good there was no on. harm, that no was the foul. First rush. Just, uh, but okay. that's when that was when I went from we're going to win this game to Minnesota sports, yeah. man. Gosh, like that was my level drop. That was when I felt like things were going down. And then let me just bring up one other thing and ask you about the game because we only got a few more minutes. But Klingberg, he sat for was it the second first half of the third period or the second period he, he sat for a very long time after personally I felt like he was standing out I know he let up a little rush here or there he was playing offensive defense like we've talked about but to me he was kind of standing out he was putting pucks on net he was shooting and yet he got sat what do you think was the reasoning behind that so the first goal that Dallas scored in the first period was a direct result and a direct breakdown by him and he sat for a lot of the second period. And, and I think they were, you know, right or wrong. I think the coaching staff was saying not tonight. Cause if you do that once or twice more, we're down three weeks. We can't get back. Yeah. Um, so the, the first goal was definitely a miscue on his, on his part. And I think it was a statement, whether that lasts until the second or not, I, I don't know, but um, I, I didn't notice him to be honest with you. I didn't notice a lot of people last night and, I don't know. I hate to say it, but I thought this was kind of the game six that Mr. Kaprizov and Mr. Boldy may just put on the Superman capes and they did not. And again, the running theme is you get what you deserve. And um, that's what happened. Alex, let me ask you if Kaprizov, we only have two minutes left, but if Kaprizov had buried that goal that he hadn't, he had an opportunity, had an open shot, would that have changed your mind? Would, would you say now today Kaprizov did have the cape on? Was it just that he needed to bury or was overall he not standing out to you? You know, I, I thought overall he, he played pretty good, but, you know, that obviously you'd love to have the goal, but we did lose by more than just one goal here, so I don't think you can say that just because he scored he was had the cape on or everything, but I don't know. I, I've also heard that some people saying that it looks like looked like he was playing hurt this series. I was just oh, curious what, sure. what your guys' thoughts were on that. I think 100% he was playing hurt this whole series, right? Had to have been. Well, this is the this is the time of year, guys, and, and it's easy to be an expert the night before, but today the uh, the the list of players that are going to have surgeries and the list of players that are going to, you know, go into rehab with their physical therapy on on is long. Is is that an excuse to other players play through injury? Absolutely, positively. Um, it was interesting. Yeah. Kirill was quoted as saying, "I'm 100% the night." the night before that game six and whether you say you're a hundred percent or you say I'm 75%, if he meant what he said, he was a hundred percent. And I don't know if you lie on that question or not. We were talking about that one night too, but I, I, think, I, you do. Just, I think you not, lie in that situation. Nothing, Sorry, and, nothing really good comes out of it. Nothing really good comes out of it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I would have lied in that situation too. You're in playoffs. I mean, there's no chance that he's healthy unless he just is at the bug that comes from Minnesota, I guess, in the playoffs, because this was the longest pointless streak of his career. Uh, we got 20 seconds left. Alex, let me ask you, should they have taken Gus out of the game? Were you okay with putting Flurry in? Did you feel like that was like, oh, the game's over now? And did Flurry do good? You got 10 seconds. Go. Yeah, at that point, it felt like the game was already kind of over. And it's just like, you know what? Send him out there. Who cares? I thought he looked pretty good. He looked confident, but it was too late. <laughs> All right. That's our You're seven also minutes. probably planning on. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, okay just bonus thought. round. One more question. Finish your thought. You're, last, also, last you're thought. also planning on. You're also. You're also planning on probably pulling your goalie with three or four minutes left, and maybe they thought Flurry was a better breakaway or, or, or a, a, a better goalie in that situation. But I, I had no problem with it. I don't think it was disrespectful to Gus, and I don't think it was disrespectful to the flower. And I'm yeah. talking really fast because I know we're out of time. Yeah. No, and, and this is a good segue spot because I think this is a good place to start about talking about the future. We know, just to recap, Obviously, there was lots of issues with the refs in this this series. There was lots of issues with, you know, cheap shots from Suter. All this stuff we can complain about, but that was not the reason we lost. Those were just storylines that underlying of Minnesota sports losing another playoff series in the first round. And 
whether it's on the coaches or the players, that is what is now to be determined. And that is what we need to start discussing moving forward. That's what we're going to talk about this offseason. We're going to talk about what players are coming back, what players are sticking around, what guys need to do to work on things. Uh, if you've made it this far, we appreciate it. Please give us a like, a subscribe would be very much appreciated. We've had lots of subscribers this series, so thank you so much to everybody who did that. Uh, if you're watching now, please do that as well. <laughs> Obviously, we just had an edit because <laughs> Eric lost his service, but we're good now, right, Gis? We're all set. All right. You know what? Car, if, I'm gonna say, if I'm going to say something to offend anybody, I want to be... <clears throat> Locked and loaded uh, and, and yeah. ready to travel. <laughs> so, All right. Well, not, you're up north. Hopefully, man. That's Which is where uh, I think a lot of the wild players are going to head now is to the cabin, maybe go golfing. That's where they're headed. But uh, let's just talk about where we left it off in the game, and that's the goaltending situation. Obviously, we have Marc-Andre Fleury. We got Gustafson, who absolutely stood on his head for this team in both the series and the regular season. One of the best there is, young guy. And we got, uh, obviously, Jesper Volstead coming up pretty soon. Do you think we see him in net? Are you going to have three goaltenders on the staff? Are you going to be scratching no. a guy? What's what's kind of the plan there, you think, Yes? Jesper for sure stays in, in, in Iowa uh, for more seasoning. They want him to play more games starting next year mm. to get up a little bit of that endurance and get to that NHL level. They, he split games with Zane McIntyre all year in Iowa. And, you know, that's 35 games. And, you want them upwards of 40 or 45 games capable before you get to the National Hockey League. And let's face it, Gus is the guy right now. Fleury's got another year or two, I think, left on his contract. It sounded so like the one, yeah, it sounded like but this the time, is be his the, last year. My point is the time that the, 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 the timing of Jesper coming up and being ready to roll is at the end of Fleury's contract, um, you know, mm -hmm. barring something unforeseen or injury or something like that. But I don't think – you'll see Jesper Volstead at XL next year, that's for sure. You'll see him, you know, for sure five or ten games or, or maybe more if there's any, you know, injuries, knock on wood. But um, I, Billy Guerin and this organization has never rushed goaltenders along. You know, Gustafson's a ripe old age of 24. Jesper's 20. Fleury's obviously the long and tooth one there. But it, ideally, you know, in training camp, you're going to get Jesper some more time with Fleury and Jesper some time with Gus. But – I, I don't see any scenario, um, you know, barring a flurry uh, retirement yeah. that comes out of nowhere this summer that Jesper Volstead is now nowhere but Iowa next year, at least for well, the start, a, for sure. It's a fun conversation for sure to think about, but obviously it wasn't our issue in the series. Our goaltending was strong. Uh, you know, we lost game two with flurry in the net, but it is what it is. I didn't think our goaltending was an issue. Uh, let's kind of dive into what everybody's talking about, and that is the coaching staff. I'll start with you, Alex. I've been seeing a lot of stuff um, out there about who should be let go, what Billy G should do. We obviously know that Billy Guerin just let go all of the Iowa coaching staff. Do you think this is something that we could see? We're obviously, you know, we, we care about the wild coaching staff. We don't want to see anybody lose their jobs, but this has happened a few times in a row. What do you think, Alex? Where are we headed? Yeah, I don't think we're seeing uh... – uh, like to to the full extent that Iowa had, but I think we're definitely going to see a few pieces moving around and see some new faces in that front office. But, you know, it's hard after dropping a series like this where it felt like we really could have had this one. And, you know, it's hard to sit and not say, hey, we need to change something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I candidly, guys, and, you know, um, I, I never woke up this morning and said we, uh, the, go, the, the Minnesota Wild need a coaching change. Um, I, I, I do think this will be a coaching staff now uh, that will be probably a little bit more under the microscope. Um, obviously, it's a day after an emotional exit from this series. The Wild have a track record at doing this. But, I mean, if you look at, if you look at injuries and the squeeze they felt from the salary cap, you know, with Suter and Parisi already this year and what – teams you could kind of field did we have always top six forwards did we always you know half of our roster was from iowa half the time it was a yeah. piecemeal job you also have to remember this team came very close to winning the central division and was in the top five of the western conference so it's the playoff equation that's eventually going to catch up to you know decision makings like we're talking about but no how no way do i would ever prognosticate or equate a change of an entire coaching staff based on what happened here in the last 24 hours. That's one man's opinion. Yeah. 
And obviously that game was just one game. It was an entire series, and there was lots of things that were out of the coach's hands as well. You know, you got to also have your captain step up. You got to have Felino step up. Some of that discipline was an issue in this. But we did see the coaching staff make some line changes, which I predicted and said they should do. I did see Boldy and Kaprizov on a line even together at one point, which was nice to see. And they made Boldy uh, switch over to left wing, which was interesting. <laughs> um, rather than putting him on Capri Sanf's line right away. But we are clearly going to see a lot different lines next year. Is there anybody that you think have to stick together? Does, you know, Hartman have to stick, you know, with uh, Capri Sanf? Does anybody need to stay with someone? Does Mojo come back? He's a free agent, I think. Does he need to be with Boldy? Is there anyone on any of these lines that you think this pair or this set need to stay together? Or is everything out the window? Alex, yeah, what do you I, think? I think I think after what we saw this playoffs, that Mojo Boldy connection is real. I would love to see the Wild re-sign him and keep those two together. And then I think I mean Krill and Zook just have such a good relationship. It's hard to say that you should switch those those guys up, but I think definitely Mojo and Boldy would be my pick. I, I think it's way too early to even I, I to what you said, Cole, you just throw it all out the door and start from scratch. I, I vote for that. I'm you, you know, who knows what personnel looks like next year of you know who I, I just think you you have to find the right combinations where you've got a top line, a second line, a third line, and a fourth line based on what the reality of the league is and what the you know, basically what it's calling for and you know, Minnesota was stretched, man. I mean, they their second line many nights was not nearly the second line of a Boston Bruins or an Edmonton Oilers or a Colorado Avalanche just by sure virtue of caps and by sure virtue of trades that didn't work out or trades that did by injuries. Sounds like I'm making excuses, but I'm telling you, man, winning at this level is tough. Winning at the yeah. national – I mean, everyone who wants to bitch this morning about the exit goes like, do you actually think the coaching staff, do you actually think the players, do you actually think they didn't want to win maybe more than you? Now, what I do love sitting in, in, in the XL Energy Center last night is season ticket holders screaming their heads off because that's the right you get when you spend $10,000, $15,000 in season tickets. So it's always a double-edged sword. The weekend after elimination is always emotional. But I, and, and, and by the way, let's just say you, you, you just clean house and who's next? What is is there a guarantee on the next bunch? Or do we got to get the players yeah. play, coaches coach, coaches coach, players play? I, I think it's way too early to be talking about line combinations. I think it's far too early to be talking about coaching changes. But I do think come next season, uh, this this front office and this fan base will not tolerate another early exit in the playoffs. And that, that much you know from living in Minnesota for over 60 years. Yep, we have definitely felt that with the Timberwolves, obviously the Vikings, the Twins. It doesn't matter. We're used to these first-round exits, and it is not fun. At least they did win a few games, pushed it to game six, so I guess it could be worse, but didn't feel good being up 2-1 and then dropping off. But let's kind of wrap it up. We're obviously going to be doing lots more podcasts. This may be the end of the wild season, but it's not the end of the season for us doing wild podcasts. We also cover the Vikings and the twins and the wolves. We're going to be doing a podcast to wrap up their season soon as well. So please subscribe. We appreciate it. But let me just wrap this up with one thought from each of us, whether it's positive or negative or whatever you got your final thought. And I'll start with mine. And that was with, Brock Faber I think obviously we traded Fiala to get him and I think we got something else I forget exactly but he is going to be around a long time I think every Minnesota Wild fan yesterday watching that game he was kind of that one little strand of hope that we all held on to watching that game and said look it Brock Faber knows what he's doing he looks like he's played in this league a long time he's going to be around a long time he's not going to be going down to Iowa I can tell you that he is here to stay he is hopefully going to be playing with another veteran presence on that D partnership um, to just make him even better. But when they went down and they were down 3-0 and you start seeing Brock Faber start to attack the zone offensively like Klingberg does, you knew he's something special. He's He can step up. He understands the situation. He knows what he had to do. He knew he had to take risks to try to win this game, and he almost buried a couple. He had a few chances for sure, and he was the light out of that entire game to me. Uh, but anyway, 
Gis, I'll I'll send it to you next. What's your your final note on the the season for the Wild? Um, probably got what they deserved, uh, and, and were victim of circumstance uh, on many levels. Uh, and the Dallas Stars were a very very good hockey team. Congratulations to them for moving on. I think they'll go deeper than a lot of people think. I'm going to be really interested and really excited to see how Billy Guerin in the front office navigates the half a dozen UFAs, unrestricted free agents on their team, who could possibly be coming up from Iowa. And those are topics that we'll get into on future episodes here on Hot Dish. But sure. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, it's it's bitterly disappointing. I'm bitterly disappointed by the outcome in, in, the, in the postseason. I, they, I, they had a better season than I thought regular season, but hugely disappointed in the outcome, and I'm not alone. Yeah, you are definitely not alone in that, Gith. And as as much as it sucks to see your your season end like this, I think it's important that you do step back and look at the whole the season as a whole. I mean, just such a fun season. We got to watch Boldy come into his own. We got to watch uh, Gus the Bus kind of make his name in the NHL. So as much as you hate to see it end like that, I think it's important to appreciate the the fun times we did have throughout the year. Yep, and. I know I said that was the last question, but just a yes or no answer. 2023, 2024, Minnesota Wild, are they a win now team? Yes or no? Yes. yes. All right. Well, that's what we want to hear. That's what I want to say to all the Wild fans. We are still in win now mode. They still have some amazing young talent, lots of talent down in Iowa. I mean, that barn, my goodness, they are coming up. Jesper's going to be here one day. Kaprizov's still young. Don't forget, Boldy's young. Don't give up on this team. I think of all the Minnesota teams, I love the Twins. I love the Vikings and the Wolves. Don't get me wrong, but it just feels like the Wild are going to stumble into a championship before any of them. It feels like the time is just on the edge. I thought this would be the year, but hey, next year, they're just that much better. They've gone through this adversity, so do not give up on this team. Keep watching our podcast. we got lots more stuff to get into, like Eric said. We're going to get into all the the UFAs, all the people that are going to be changing, coming up, coming down, you name it. But please subscribe. We appreciate it. And uh, hey, go wild. Go twins now. Go Vikings now, right? (laughs) Grit first. (laughs) Thanks for watching. (laughs) 